In 2010, the UK government published a report in which it said that Jaywick, the town seen behind me, is the most deprived area in the country. In 2015 and 2019, this report was updated, and while the particulars may have changed, one thing didn't. Jaywick is still the most deprived area in the country. Meet Sylvia, one of the lovely locals I was able to speak to while in the troubled town. From outdated posters to overgrown foliage, from litter lined beaches to houses which need more than just a new lick of paint, Jaywick's poverty can be seen at a glance. On that last point, it's worth noting that many of Jaywick's homes, especially the ones in the Brooklands area of the town, were not built with permanent habitation in mind, instead used in the 20th century for short holiday visits. Now though, People like Sylvia believe these buildings have overstayed their welcome. Right down the other end, in Orleans, um, that needs, well, it needs knocking down and building again. It's, uh, it's really bad. It makes Jamie have a bad night, and, you know, and it isn't. When you're in the village part of Jamie, it's, uh, it's lovely. How do you make that fair to the people who live in those places? Well, they're building in places all the time. Some social housing uh, and put the people in the social housing, and they can knock them all the old ones down. And they, I mean, half of them have got gas and electric, um, and they can build some really nice sort of flats, you see, view flats. You know? mm -hmm. um, that's what it needs, it needs some uh, social housing. For some, however, the low cost housing is one of the big reasons for living in the area in the first place. It's cheap to live here in small housing and, and economic housing, and we can walk down to and see this beautiful beach and sea, and it's a very friendly place to live. Despite these advantages, people here don't feel the results of the government report, which ranked Jaywick as England's most deprived neighbourhood, are without justification. Yes, I think it's a fair evaluation. There's, there's people here with very little money and that, that in itself causes a few problems, but I think things are improving. They've improved the roads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The videos always show terrible roads. They've all been, all, all been repaired and, and fixed up. Some more so than others. But sure, on the whole, there has been infrastructural improvements, but these piecemeal changes have not been enough to see Jaywick make any measurable progress. Other areas of the country, however, are managing to transform themselves. Many of those registering the most progress since 2015 are found in London, but the dense urban streets of the capital can't really be compared to the coastal village of Jaywick. Instead, I felt that the seaside town of Margate would make for a better model for Jaywick to follow as it seeks to grow. So, it was back to the train station and over to Margate. According to the data, six out of the 500 most improved areas of England are all to be found in the town. To be clear, comparisons between different editions of the indices are not an exact science, so my first job once there was to see whether that apparent statistical progress is evidenced by noticeable change. It's getting, it is getting better. So there is a feeling of things going on in the art. Eight years ago, it was a bit of a dump. <laughs> it was really rough. But, uh, it's definitely 
I would say it's definitely getting better. Great. I've not completely wasted my time then. And while I can't say whether it's improved, this was my first time in Margate, I can say that I enjoyed my time there. My intuition was that Margate's seafront affair was pretty good, which explained why a tourist would choose this over this. However, among many people I spoke to, another factor was emphasised. Um, I think the success of Margate is it's quite a large um, kind of art kind of scene down here. And with that, it brings down not just artists, but musicians and all different types of people. There's different kind of local groups. There's one called Grass, and they've actually taken over the bandstand, and they're going to make that. Uh, I'm not sure what they're going to do with it, but they're going to do it up, and it's going to be for the community, and, mm -hmm. and that's the sort of thing that's happening down here. Is they're actually getting the funding and making the place quite nice. This sentiment was shared by Sir Roger Gale, the area's MP. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that the single most important factor in the regeneration of Margate has been the construction and opening of the Conterna Temporary Art Gallery. Um, that one building has had a domino effect that has created an artistic quarter effectively throughout Thanet and particularly throughout Margate obviously. And um, I think without that, we would be nowhere near where we are today. But that in itself has attracted investment. It has brought people into the town. That's not the only cultural draw of Margate. Margate is a, is a town. The old town of Margate is one of, I believe, only two intact towns, original seaside towns in the country. That's right. Unlike Jerwick's origins as a private developer's get-rich-quick scheme, Margate has real history to it. But even in spite of, and perhaps because of these attractions, Margate's economy remains a fragile one. We are heavily dependent upon tourism, um, but we are a seaside town, and, <laughs> and that's not in, therefore entirely surprising. Margate's within easy reach of London, so it's easy to get to for a day, which in, in effect is a bit of a drawback actually, because of course people used to come for a fortnight seaside holiday. Now they just whip, whip down for the week, you know, stick their head out of the window in the morning and say, oh, it looks like a nice day, we'll go down to Margate. <laughs> just drive down for the day. We want people to come and stay for long weekends if possible. Mm -hmm. What do you think needs to happen going forward? How do you keep that progress going? The tourist industries and tourist related industries are doing well. We've got a, a good offer, a good seaside town offer, but Thanet as an island still has one of the highest levels of social deprivation in the southeast. It is worth remembering that those six fastest improving neighbourhoods are all still in the bottom 10% nationally. Nobody is denying that there are still some issues to sort out here. There's a lack of employment, um, lack of employment opportunities, so there tends to be a brain drain, you know, young bright people who are ambitious and want to go to university and then get on and do things tend to leave Thanet. Mm -hmm. which is a shame. And what we're trying to do is attract industries into Thanet. I am trying very, very hard still to get the airport reopened, because if we can get the airport reopened, that's potentially hundreds, then thousands, and then tens of thousands, well, certainly 10,000 um, jobs in skilled industries, in aviation engineering and all that sort of thing. And that's what we need locally. If Margate can add to its existing intercity links, and offset its reliance on seasonal tourism at the same time, I would think it to be in an enviable situation, especially when compared with Jaywick. Although there is still a question of why. Why did renovating the Martello Tower at the western end of Jaywick and installing an art exhibit within it fail to produce the domino effect and full-scale rejuvenation seen as a result of the Turner Contemporary in Margate? One person I spoke to had some idea as to what the missing link was. If you were to be able to give advice to other coastal towns, like you say, Margate is perhaps improving, whereas many others are still struggling, what advice do you think you would give to those areas in terms of what lessons can they learn from Margate's success? Yeah. I think Margate's probably got a very good PR team. I mean, a, a few years ago, in, in one of the um, sort of international guides, Margate was one of, was listed as 
one of the place, one of the top ten places to see before you die, or, mm -hmm. or you are a must see place this year. <laughs> so P PR probably um, is is more important than lo local councils might think. And so far is a difficulty. As someone who makes documentaries, I am bound to tell the truth as I find it. And that truth is that, if you're living in London and want to move out of the city, I'd recommend you move to Margate or the Jaywick in almost all cases. But if the story of Margate is that good PR brought people to the town, then by making a documentary like this, or writing an article like this, or making a statement like this, Jaywick is a shanty town. I do feel like we aren't giving Jaywick an opportunity to grow and evolve. And they deserve it. The vast majority of the people I spoke to while there were extremely friendly and accommodating, and so, I do hope that in the next revision of the Indices of Deprivation, Jaywick shows signs of improvement and won't still be dead last. Thanks for watching.